music. <laughs> I know, right? I feel like I'm at like a an elevator or something. I feel like I'm at an IHOP waiting in Orlando. Well, dude, I got I got me going. I don't know if they have video yet. Look at that breakfast. Oh, let's go. Let's that's go. That's a full haul. You that's what you call. Thing. That's what you call vegan, right there. <laughs> right, that's the vegan, gluten free. Remember that Big ice cream song? Today was a good day. Mama cooked the whole hog. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did you ever? You're in South Florida, but you ever eat for New Year's uh, hog? Uh, you know, on the on the uh, uh, on the fire roast hog or anything? Oh, the Cubans love doing like a full pig. Yeah, we would do that for uh, for New Year's and stuff. Get it out, and then just. Just get your your fork right there in the hog, and yeah, there's there no there's go. no sides, there's no sides, there's no bread, there's no fixings. You're just like ripping pieces of it. Off rip of off it. the hog. I mean, we would always get like white rice, black beans, plop and oats, <laughs> uh, yuca. What else? Cuban bread. Um, yeah, well, I'll mix it with you know stuff like that too. But uh, we got a guy in the hospital watching us right now, Fred. Fred, get better, bro. Get out, yeah, of, get out of there. Hopefully, hopefully you got a good looking nurse. That always makes it better. <laughs> yeah. I hate <laughs> hospitals. I don't know how people work in them. People choose like I don't know. places you know, that people choose to work in that I can't understand. High school dude, or hospitals. My wife works in a high school. I just don't dude, get it. I I'll left the high school and I never walked back into one on purpose. I get I get anxiety walking through uh school. I get anxiety at that and then any doctor office, any hospital. Mm. I, should get paid million dollars a year to work there the ones that you know even the people who do your blood and all that like the, the, i i don't know how they do it i really don't they don't know about draft king weeklies that's how they don't know about that they got to find out about that it's, it's starting to move too drafting you want to pull it up <laughs> yeah it's let's start- talk let's let's give it a minute we had like a delay for some reason this morning on like sending out alerts that we're even having this show i don't know the people that are here are kind of like you know devotees but uh let's give it a minute let's just i'll let you eat your pig a little bit let's talk about valentine's day did you uh did you do the usual lance move and, and dump your girlfriend right before v-day that's the that's a pro move right or your, your girls i should say what you do to save money is you dump every girl you're talking to you ghost them mm. right and then mm. like a couple of after you give them the excuse oh i was out of town i was traveling which this year was true Yes. I was playing you were. down uh, Wednesday night. I was in Jacksonville, home of the old people, and and, and everything closed at 8 p.m. and golf carts. But I did stay at Margaritaville, you know, with Jimmy Buffett. Oh, that's cool. That was fun. It was on the beach. I mean, it was cold. <laughs> so. But um, I actually had an excuse. I was away. Yeah. I was halfway, and I wasn't home. So now I'll start, you know, you know, creeping back into it. But, you know, girls really love that, uh, the Valentine's, you know, the whole, the whole uh, sentimental value. Oh, I got you this. I got you this. I got myself a new Rolex. That's what I did. Let's go. That's awesome. I'll tell you what, I think that it's a, I think it's like a lot of things kind of a scam, right? It's like a, it's a catalyst to get people to buy shit. It is. Um, But at the same point in time, like I've been married for 17 years, so I got to do something. I got to keep it tight. I got to keep it right. I do my best. Sometimes my best isn't good enough, but you got to try. You got to try. <laughs> you got to try on some level. Sometimes. Not all the time. Not all the time. You got to take an option, right? There's optionality to it. You know what the best play is? And, and I like what Alex wrote in the chat. I won't repeat it because we don't want to get canceled, but you got to look at it. The best <laughs> saying, hey, uh, honey, let's go to breakfast. Let's go to Cracker Barrel the next morning or the day before, because then it's cheap. You could play checkers. You could buy something at Cracker Barrel. What are you going to spend fifty bucks on a, you know, on a whatever the Cracker Barrel has in their store? And then you're good. You know, you don't have to plan it. You know, you drink mimosas now at Cracker Barrel. It's a nice day. I had Thanksgiving there once a year. It was the best Thanksgiving I had. I think one time I messed up and I didn't get. A mo- I didn't get a Mother's Day for my wife reservation. She wanted to go to like some fancy brunch. Brunch is another uh, scam. We're gonna we're gonna give you eggs. We're gonna give you a shitty mimosa. I'm gonna charge you thirty dollars, which for what should cost eight. 
right? And so I think I, I effed up the reservation. We ended up going through the Mickey D's drive through with the kids in the back. It was, I mean, I love me, I love me a, you know, sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. So I was fine, but she wasn't thrilled. You hear about McDonald's CEO, their ex CEO, getting SEC charges? For what? Insider trading? Who's a dirty dog? He's a dirty dog, like lying to investors and stuff. But he's out. He's good. That, you have the China. No, the, the dude. I could tell you stories, dude. I used to, when I worked at Bear, my first job at Bear was in sales. And I was talking to people, like people, people, every morning, every day, like top people in New York City. Uh, fund managers, CEOs of companies, et cetera. I could tell you stories. I would never talk on video because I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but remind me next time we have an event to talk about the bear days. Vince McMahon, you know, people that came through that place. Martha Stewart. Yeah. Oh, those yeah. people are not at all. They're not corrupt at all. They have nothing Martha wrong with them. Martha went to jail. I, I don't know anything about that, but I might some, know something about that. But let's not let's, let's digress. Let's go into let's look at some shit here. Let's look at some of these numbers. I think that's enough time. We got. I was looking. Look how nerdy I am. I was looking at Bloomberg, CFTC, non-commercial future positioning. Because someone got me down a rabbit hole. One of these conspiracy guys on FinTwit that I like was like, you know the Fed, you know the Federales are out here, the plunge protection team shorting oil nonstop, and I'm like, yeah. I think that could be the case, but that's good because like in stocks, the same phenomenon happens in anything that you get like a consolidated short position. You could have a mega short squeeze. So I was looking at this crude oil net positioning and it's like the least long it's been since 2015, which really? means somebody's actively shorting it is, is what that, that means, that it's so low. From a speculation standpoint, these are non like oil companies. These are just speculators, fund managers, anyone that's not an oil business that has a crude oil contract is reporting as a non commercial future uh, speculator yeah, in the, spe at, at the NYMEX. And this yeah. is this is the lowest we've seen, you know, in almost ten years. In almost wow. 10 years. right now, long I mean, oil. Yeah. If you, if you look, so you had uh, oil, gold sell off obviously uh, equity is selling off but you've also had the dollar start to get a little bit of a bid nowadays too i actually uh and this sounds yeah. crazy but i'm actually starting to uh, uh dabble in some oil stocks i bought uh liberty good. energy yesterday good you which one uh, liberty energy l b r t i did the uh July 17 and a half calls in it. L B R T. There you go. Not a crazy mover, right? But um, no, it's kind of it's kind of sober for an oil stock. Right, right. So I I, I bought all the way in June. Um, so obviously that's very long dated, especially for me. So almost three billion market cap. It's not a small it's it's okay. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I yeah, like but that. It, it was a new one that hit my radar. Um so you know that did you that buy these did you bought these July 17s? Yeah, how many hit the line that day? It was about almost two thousand. Almost yeah, 2, it was about yeah. The order was about <laughs> nothing else for like two months, but there was action. Yeah, that's why I thought it was weird, right? You had nothing in open interest, um, and any other expirations or anything, and then you had these big players come in. I think they paid a buck sixty-five for them, and then I mm -hmm. bought some at that, and then I think I bought some at a buck sixty, and then like five at one fifty-five. I don't so, hate it. I don't hate it. At yeah, all. I'll probably add this morning because it's probably going to gap down, you know, because crude. So yeah. I'll probably add it this morning, maybe <laughs> 20. I mean, if we look at the stock again, what, what was it? The uh, 17s? Yeah, or 17 and a half. Uh, 17 and a half. Okay. I think this stock, like if we get oil, let's say, let's, let's compare it to crude, right? Yeah, if pull it get, up. If we get crude, which will be like this blue line here to tick back up to a hundo. And that's, that's a long shot, but it's not impossible, if, especially if a squeeze happens on these future positions that I was showing you. This is a stock that could easily trade back up here. I think yeah. actually, well, you know, dollars is not crazy. I mean, but it's like we said the other week, some of these little oil drillers, like your rigs, um, your SWNs, you know, when they move, it's not rare for them to move five, seven, 10% a day or so. 
you just need some kind of 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 uh obviously move and and crew to get these names with the momentum going yeah i mean look at this guys these guys are plant trading at a freaking six pe dude like look at this shit it's incredible <laughs> they, they, pr they brought like these people make money at the price that it is now like that's why they're so sensitive to the price of gas and oil because if it right. goes up, like it gets stupid how much money they make like they're going to make 1.2 billion dollars in revenue this year and they're trading at a 2.8 billion dollar market cap like what other business other than like us <laughs> trades at that kind of multiple right think about that so yeah right. you i will i will say full disclosure make sure you uh uh, the bid ask yesterday was wider than a truck, especially in the afternoon when uh, yeah. the market started selling off with the with that Fed head opening his big mouth. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, make make sure if you do put put an order in, you know, try mid market limit orders, stuff like that, because they were very very wide. Obviously, uh, there was not much volume or open interest in anything. But how long uh, will you? Out of curiosity, how long will you wait? How long will you sit there at, like mid spread before you update it? Do you have patience? Um, I'll usually wait like a minute, Max. That's I what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I get a little bit antsy. I, I, you, can tell, you can tell after a minute if it's a real market maker or not is why it's a teachable moment, right? Like if someone's really there to do some business, to, 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 to do some trading, they'll hit you at mid-spread. So, yeah. but uh, yesterday I did a trade in uh, Hubs. I bought some hubs calls, right? I'm trying to get the damn lighting in here. Look I bought some this. this is something totally different. So people are like, why are we like, why don't we have that? I mean, the Fed's trying to kill us, right? But this they is are. what I'm bringing up here today. This is something I was looking at this morning also. You know, I wake up too early. I'm an old man, but I was looking at this shit because I was curious. Live. 80, 80. This is, this is the 210 spread and it's minus 80 basis points. So the two-year U.S. Treasury is, is yielding 80 more basis points than the 10-year right now. And we haven't seen that level going back all the way since God knows when. Like we're like we're below 2008, like recession here, like great financial crisis. So I think that it's something to pay attention to. It's kind of a longer term thing. It's not going to like impact like the crush the open types of trades, obviously. Like DraftKings yeah. don't give an F about the twos and tens. But what's going on? I mean, what is going? This last move that we had this week in in uh, in 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 two year rates and short term paper, it's pretty severe. It's pretty severe. And the first day it was happening, like was two days ago, I wrote that. You guys saw that in the Telegram that I was teasing on my burn notice that I was like, we got to short Zoom here because Zoom, yeah. Zoom was getting dragged up uh, with Roblox. What people don't understand is like, and you've been saying this like a all, freaking all, all the shit stocks move together. They all move together. This is the year that they're going to decouple a little bit. They're going to have like these wild moves on certain days all together. But yeah. then over the coming days, you're going to see a decoupling of them, right? And that's where you got to have people like Lance at Polito, people like Jeff Sananiri that are like, no, you got to be long draft kings, not this one. You got to be, you know what I'm saying? Because in 2022, it was a lot more binary. Everything just got sold. I think yep. this year, because of the fact that we've got this rates thing that's still going on, but some of these companies are okay, bro. They're okay, right? Yeah. You know what? So, so you're, it is very, very selective what you're seeing. You're seeing some, some of these high growth things still get crushed. Other will have a one or two day squeeze. Yeah. And then that's it. You know, it, it, it's like you saw uh, Roblox. Uh, the other day, you saw Twilio yesterday. You know, we were talking the about Roblox. I love Roblox. I was telling you that. I was like, this is not like the rest of these stocks. These guys, my kid is on this every damn morning on Roblox. Yeah, it's the crap. thing about Roblox that's great is it's actually like a good critical thinking tool. Like kids figure out like how to like build shit and design stuff with it. And that's cool. That's got upside because it's got the support of like parents are like, yeah, I'll spend you some money on Roblox. You know okay. what I'm saying? But well, uh, yeah, 
Also, too, you know, it's not like the other video game stocks that have such a bad sediment. You know, like the Activisions, the Take Two Interactives, the EA. Did you see Randy R just said he shorted DraftKings yesterday? Did you watch Monday? Are you are you like? Do you hate us? Hey, let 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 let, let a dirty dog do his thing. I, you know, to be honest with you, I don't blame. Do you him. hate us? Do you do you hate us? I mean, we told you guys to buy DraftKings. I I I can't. I really can't blame him though. If you if you look at the move between Monday and and yesterday, so Thursday. DraftKings was up so much, and those those options rallied so much. Listen, you know, with if you're long, but this is how I'm gonna. This is a teacher. You just can't. Is, you can't step in front of a train. Right this now. is a teachable so moment. Hard to short. This is a teachable moment. This is how you die. This is how you die. <laughs> if you do something freaking great, and you make a shit ton of money, and then you think you're the fucking master, and you're gonna reverse it and go short it in the opposite direction. That's how you die. You can exit a trade before the earnings if you've made a ton of money for Monday, but to flip it and reverse it, like you are like this like concerto maestro and you just made a shit ton of money on the long side, that's how you die. From my, from my experience, I've made those sins left and right. It is so hard. It is so hard to step in front of a freight train and short, especially a high growth stock. Uh, so when we say high growth, high junk, shit stock, any kind of arc, any high speculative stock, any stock with a bearish chart, if you're trying to short it, especially right now, because some of these names are rallying so much, not only do you have to be right in terms of timing, okay, but also the volatility, so the implied volatility options are going to be expensive. So you're going to up pay for you know to buy those puts so if you don't have like a three five percent plus move the puts are not even going to pay and but it then, is totally it is totally it is totally a, a situation though where you think like here's the thing if i do this is how this is how you have to be an idiot to be a good trader i'm going to give you an example everyone wants to find something cool and unique to make money on rather than yeah. just to make money on it right they want to be smarter. They want to be different. Yeah. They want to be cutesy. They want to be freaking famous. I'm like, if I'm long, I'm going to play this stock from the long side only, like exclusively from the long side. So I make a checklist in my head and I go, okay, Jeff, did I get the call right on the stock going up? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to start shorting it. No, never. That's the stock I trade from the long side. Now, if I show you a stock, like let's look at Lucid, right? This is a stock that I shorted well. I don't, I can't buy Lucid for better or for worse. I can't buy it because my best call in this freaking piece crap, I'm shorting this pig, right? So I'm always thinking to myself, how did I make money? Let me do that again. Just a teachable moment. And, and not yeah. to go reverse that. That's how you die. In my try, opinion. try to, I don't want to say think like an idiot, but keep it simple. simple. Don't, it, it's very, everyone wants to get, Cute, and I've done this before. Heck, I bought a, how much did I buy of Chewy yesterday at the close? I bought, you guys want to laugh and you can make fun of me. I bought a 50 lot of Chewy weekly 47 and a half calls yesterday before the close. Yeah. And, you know, Chewy's down. It's only trade oh, look 20. Look at Kings above 20 now. Let's go. Let's Damn. go. So I got we talked to you about this stock four days ago at 15 and a half dollars. You guys realize that, right? Well, I got yeah. cute. I got cute with Chewy. You know, my options are going to be down 50, 60 percent because I, you know, a went against the trend because it was selling off yesterday. But I got cute thinking, oh, the name can squeeze today. That ain't going to work, right? Because I'm going to lose money. What I should have done is said, hey, what's strong yesterday? Let me play a name like that, or what's weak? Let me play it to the downside. You Rapid know what's a good trading. thing, also, Lance. You know what's also a good thing to do, a good strategy to do. You know, got you guys know I love link trades. You know I love pairing and hedging and shit. If you're getting like antsy that you think like the market's going to turn or a stock's going to turn, rather than flipping a position on a stock that's made you a lot of money on the upside, buy some TQQ calls or puts. You know, trade trade the index, trade like the Nasdaq. <laughs> as the hedge bearishly, not the stock. Yeah. Find another shit stock that's in the same thing. Uh, but that's just some tips, man. So Jen's asking me, <laughs> exit the open. Very, take uh, half off, take half off in the first 15 minutes. Let, let's see where the other half goes. These uh, stocks can move 20%. It has happened. Who oh knows? yeah, I, I always say, I'm gonna hedge, hedge with a boring ETF. 
because you're not open to single stock news. If you, if you want to hedge, VXX used to be good, but that's a whole other story. But you can I do, like TQQ because it's on steroids, like the crack stocks, right? It, like the crack can going to move 10%. That thing moves 4 or 5% in a day, right? So you, it's three times leverage, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if Jeff's a freak of nature with the three, and I, I can't say that. I used to trade the nugget back in the day. Remember the nugget? <laughs> yeah. I, that used to be my baby back in the day. I the would nugget. get all the nugget. The nugget was three <laughs> times gold bull. But that's that's when gold actually moved. Now gold. But I'm not telling people to like invest on this on these things for a long period of time. No, you can't trade them for days. Exactly. You can't because they have a decaying they have a decaying factor. Yeah. Yes, you cannot. Full disclosure: any leverage ETF is horrendous for horrendous investing. long term. Never but have one of those as a long term thing. Yeah, because it, it, it's a decaying asset long term, and they keep having to roll the futures. It's horrible, and that's why VXX is. You know, obviously now what you see, or UBX, well, I remember that, that used to be popular. But in terms of trading, they're very liquid instruments um, that you can get in and out of. Personally, I would not hold anything more than like a week uh, in that space. But uh, for a couple of days or for a couple, you know, small position sizes, some lotto tickets, oh, for sure. Yeah, it's so on Mondays, on Mondays, we like to talk about like a particular play, right? And catalysts are going to happen for the week. This show is all about the market. It's about the market, right? The market's opening today on a Friday. It's the last trading day. Then we're going to have three yeah. days off. Three days a long ass time for shit to happen. Now balloons get shot down. You could have the aliens actually introduce themselves to Kamala. I'm waiting for that. You could have all kinds of things happen. Do you think they'll accept her or will she be hiding? I think she might already be one. I think she might introduce them to us because they're her overlords. I don't know. I'm I'm curious to find, I'm curious. I think she might rip her mask off like Scooby Doo. I'm not sure. But I want to look at some macro things because we've had some really weird moves this week, man. We've the had, week's the week's been a shithole. There, there's no way to put it. Between the only yesterday thing that was right, the only thing was right was our draft king play. That was the only the thing only, one, that was probably the only thing I got right in fairness for the rest of the week, too. For all my other I, stuff. I, dude, I'm right there with you. This week has been a mess. Talk. It's not only been a sell-off, but it's been a boring sell-off of everything. You know, not just just not just stocks, but every asset class. It's yes. just been very boring of a week to trade directional, and that's oh. what uh, and that's what I hate, and that's what sadly this week has been. It's just been like a very low volume drift sell-off with nothing. I mean, nothing good. Um, well, look at this. Look at this. So this is uh this is a Nasdaq future, right? So Nasdaq future on the tenth made a low, uh, about a hundred and eighty, about another percent and a half lower than this. That would be like for me like a hard place for people to try a lot of long, like a lot of long, not a little bit of long, a lot of long, because I think you can a lot, can, a lot of long. I think you can bounce here. I think I personally have a feeling that the open print this morning is going to be the low of the day. I think really? gonna... you, you think you think we just go straight up at the open, kind of like yesterday, but then obviously we had a sell off. Yep, I do because I it think is, that, I think I think the move that happened in the la late afternoon yesterday, like, was incredibly exaggerated, and then they're continue. This is a continuation over an already exaggerated move uh, off information that people know, and we're still, in my mind, in a BTFD environment. We just are. Just I, I I agree. We are in the buy the dip mode. It's just yeah. buying it passing hard this week. It's it's, it's been yeah. it's been having to close your eyes, buying the dip, and not looking at your P. But the hard part yeah. was waiting for like to, this morning. Now, do I think that there might be some nervous Nellies over a three day weekend on Friday afternoon? I think that might pose a little bit of a a challenge towards the end of the day. But I think they're going to sell it off from a higher. Well, okay. <laughs> Brattles, a higher. Where where's the optimism coming from? Well, I, I think I think here's here's the here's your bull case. If we don't have another spaceship, another uh, flying Chinese fucking Pokemon flying over Alaska that we don't shoot down. If if uh, wow, Hubs is over four eleven now. Um, I got a trade I got to share with you about. But I think as long as we don't have any, you want to share the screen? Uh, I can't. I got I got all my shit here. But as long as nothing bad happens over this weekend, which obviously this we can't big control, hole. we're not yeah. we're not growing. You know, we're not we're not having uh, freaking uh, uh, balloons in our air. 
But as long as nothing like that happens negative, I think we gap up one to two percent Tuesday morning. That's that's <laughs> how entirely bold possible. I think this move can be from this sell off and consolidation phase to a bull move to the upside. Now, obviously, if we do have, I think news, we're going to close the month strong. I think we're going to close next week. I think we're going to close next week strong. We're going to, and, and this is what I'm looking at as, as potential hiccups. So we've been seeing like the CPI. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. big number is going to be the jobs numbers, right? So we're going to have a big jobs number coming out. I think it's in the beginning of March. And I think that's going to be what starts all the craziness, you know, and then the Fed. It's back to the Fed. The people want to own stocks. People are, the bull, the ties still go to the bulls on the upside. Yeah, sadly. Yep. You know, so that's what I've got. I don't have much more. Do you want yeah, to talk I got, I got one trade and this, and I, I almost feel bad saying it because the options were so expensive, but this is to show you guys just how degenerate I am. Okay. This is a no. full degenerate do not do at home type deal. So yesterday there was a, and remember, you know, this stock, if you want to pull it up hubs, it's a $400 stock. Okay. So yesterday, this guy came in buying like 400K worth of calls that expire next week. And I was like, God, I'm so, I just, I just wanted to gamble. I really like, and I, and I say that in the most non, uh, in the most, what's, what's a good word? In the most um, knowing my risk and reward and knowing myself. Most so educated I, gambler possible. Most educated, exactly. Yeah. So I, I wanted to do something. Like I told you, I bought a 50 lot of Chewy weekly calls. Those are going to go cut. They're going to get more than cut in half. So I'm going to lose probably a couple grand on that trade. But in hubs, this animal bought these calls that were 18 bucks. Okay. So that's, that's uh, or pardon me, $22. So that's $2,200 a contract, right? I think yeah. I bought them for I bought them for 18 bucks. So just about two grand a contract. I said, I'm going to buy one lot. Either I'm going to lose my full two grand if the stock stays flat or goes down on earnings, or I'm going to probably make, you know, two grand. Hopefully the stock goes up. Mm -hmm. So then the stock started puking like eight bucks in the last like 15 minutes of the day with the market. Yeah. And the, and the bid ass was wider than a truck. Like I could have never sent this out as a trailer. They were like $5 wide. Okay. That's one thing that's hard to explain to people. Like to do trade alerts is a different game than to trade. Like it's right. hard to like get something out timely that you can do with the way this market moves. But go on. I'm exactly. Sorry. And, and also too, I'm not going to give someone a $2,000 option recommendation. What if they have a $2,000 account? You know, that's their whole freaking account, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, bought, I bought a contract and then the junkie in me, I'm down like 500 bucks. So I buy another one. Yeah. Right? And the bid ass yeah. is wider. Then I say, oh, shit. So I buy another one because now I'm down like 800 bucks and the bid ask is why. And I just say, fuck it. I'm going to either lose six grand or, you know, hopefully uh, swing for the fences. Well, the stock's up 60 bucks. So I'm probably going to have a $20,000 payday or something. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what you call lucky, educated guests gambling and i will fully say that because it it was not a skillful trade it was me keep adding on the way down and got extremely extremely lucky i'm not gonna lie well, but you're still but you're still trading from the standpoint that the ties go to the bulls so you got like 70 percent of these earnings have been heralded by the markets on the upside right so yeah. you know so that's it y'all we're gonna have a three-day weekend I hope you, uh, we got a good crowd after all. I think we got like almost 500 people in this thing. We know, wow, you know, that's huge. That's huge. So, and so um, no, we I really appreciate that. We really appreciate you all riding with us. We've been doing it twice a week by demand. I have like by emails demand. from people hitting me up. You got to do twice a week. We do and, and we will fully support, you know, not only the winning trades and the good stuff we have, but the oh, yeah. losers where we are dead wrong. We're trying to really... You know, if you, if you do want to do kind of the shit. Yeah, but we had go. Tesla, we had do Tesla, it. Uber, do and DraftKings. We're three, we're three for little, three, y'all. Yeah, do it with a little three. side money, though. You know, don't don't go all huh. in on this stuff thinking we're the holy grail or you're going to be. Yeah, but we're also talking dog. macro. We're looking big picture catalyst. We're yeah. doing like teachable moments, the psychology. Like when people are telling me they went long and then they went short, I'm trying to like iron that out. We curse a little. Put your earmuffs on if you do. Yeah, like to give you an example, the NASDAQ futures just sold off. 30 points here in a minute. Like this is Cash just, open. it's just insane right now. And we haven't got the opening bell. All right. I got to run.
All right, later. I love you all. Have a great President's Day weekend. Yes. God bless George Washington. See you all later.